universal basic income, scarcity, and the market paradigm. Can abundance be achieved through science? Universal basic income, UBI, has emerged as a powerful idea, gaining traction in recent decades as a proposed solution to alleviate inequality, poverty, and unemployment caused by rapid technological advancement. UBI offers a regular, unconditional payment to all citizens, providing a financial safety net and a potential antidote to some of the issues caused by a market-driven economic system. However, a critical examination of UBI reveals that it is still rooted in the framework of money and scarcity, a system that relies on limited resources to maintain its functionality. This essay explores the inherent contradiction between UBI's potential to address systemic unfairness and the continued reliance on money, which is fundamentally based on the principle of scarcity. Moreover, we will critically analyze how the market, as an assumed driver of scientific progress, often acts as a constraint on technological innovations, especially when they threaten the established business models that benefit from scarcity. Drawing on historical examples such as Nikola Tesla's ideas for abundant electricity, we will argue that the current economic and market structures hinder the full realization of abundance through science, and that moving beyond a scarcity-driven mentality is essential for ending violence and creating a just, sustainable society. 1. The Foundations of UBI and Its Place in the Scarcity Economy Universal basic income is often hailed as a transformative policy to counteract the injustices of capitalism, particularly the displacement of labor, due to technological unemployment. Its advocates argue that UBI can mitigate the negative impacts of automation, artificial intelligence, and other technological advancements that increasingly render human labor obsolete. With the rise of robotics and AI in industries ranging from manufacturing to logistics to service sectors, millions of jobs are at risk of disappearing. UBI is thus presented as a necessary buffer to ensure that individuals have access to basic needs, irrespective of whether they can find employment. While UBI seems like a progressive solution to market-driven inequalities, it is essential to recognize that UBI still operates within a monetary system that is fundamentally based on scarcity. Money itself functions as a mechanism to allocate resources in a world where it is assumed that resources are limited. This assumption of scarcity is baked into the very structure of capitalism, where competition for resources, markets, and profits drives economic activity. As such, UBI can be seen as a form of redistribution within this scarcity-based system, a band-aid solution to the deeper issues of an economic model that thrives on maintaining scarcity. Scarcity as a core assumption, the idea that resources are limited and that there isn't enough to go around, is one of the most deeply ingrained beliefs in modern economic theory. This mentality informs not just economic systems, but also social and political structures. Scarcity leads to competition and competition, in turn, can result in violence, exploitation and inequality. When resources are scarce, individuals and groups are incentivized to hoard, fight over or control access to those resources. Money and scarcity. Money is the tool that mediates access to these supposedly scarce resources. In a market economy, money determines who has access to goods and services, and the amount of money one has is a reflection of one's ability to compete in the market. The creation of wealth for a few often comes at the expense of many, further entrenching inequality. UBI, though it provides a form of guaranteed income to everyone, does not change this fundamental dynamic, it merely seeks to soften its harshest effects. Scarcity and violence. The scarcity mindset has broader implications beyond economics, particularly in its relationship to violence. Much of human conflict throughout history can be traced to struggles over limited resources, land, water, energy, and even access to knowledge. The assumption that there isn't enough for everyone creates an atmosphere of fear, distrust, and ultimately violence. Ending violence, therefore, requires not just redistributing resources through mechanisms like UBI, but fundamentally changing the way society thinks about and organizes access to those resources. 2. UBI, a partial solution to unfairness but still a market mechanism. UBI can certainly be seen as a valuable step toward addressing the systemic unfairness created by market dynamics and technological unemployment. However, it is important to understand that UBI does not dismantle the market system. Instead, it operates within it, redistributing income without fundamentally altering the structure of capitalism. 
UBI does not challenge the underlying mechanisms of profit-driven markets, which, as we will see, can often stifle true scientific progress, particularly when such progress threatens established business interests. Technological unemployment and UBI. One of the key arguments for UBI is that it can provide a financial safety net in a world where human labor is increasingly displaced by machines. In the early 20th century, economist John Maynard Keynes predicted that technological advancements would eventually lead to a world where labor would no longer be necessary and individuals could enjoy leisure and creative pursuits. While technological progress has indeed made significant strides, the benefits have not been distributed equally. Instead, automation and AI threaten to exacerbate economic inequality, with the owners of capital reaping the benefits of increased productivity, while workers are left without employment or income. Counteracting market failures. UBI seeks to address these failures by ensuring that everyone has access to a basic level of income, regardless of their employment status. This is certainly an improvement over the current system, where millions of people live in poverty or precarious conditions despite living in some of the wealthiest societies in human history. However, UBI does not address the root causes of these inequities, which stem from the very nature of the market system itself. By providing a financial safety net, UBI may alleviate some of the symptoms of inequality, but it does not challenge the structures that create and perpetuate that inequality. Redistribution versus systemic change. The redistribution of wealth through UBI does not alter the fundamental power dynamics of capitalism. Large corporations and financial institutions will still control the majority of resources, and their profit motives will continue to shape economic and scientific priorities. UBI, while providing individuals with some level of economic security, does not change the fact that markets prioritize profits over people. As such, UBI can be seen as a partial solution that addresses some of the symptoms of inequality without fundamentally changing the system that produces it. 3. The market and scientific progress, abundance as a threat. The market is often lauded as a driver of innovation and scientific progress, with the assumption that competition and profit motives push individuals and organizations to develop new technologies that benefit society. However, History provides numerous examples of how the market can also act as a constraint on scientific progress, particularly when innovations threaten established business interests. This is particularly evident in cases where science has the potential to create abundance, undermining the scarcity-driven logic that underpins the market economy. The case of Nikola Tesla. One of the most famous examples of this dynamic is the story of Nikola Tesla a brilliant inventor whose ideas had the potential to revolutionize the world. Tesla's work on wireless electricity, for instance, could have provided humanity with access to virtually unlimited, free energy. Such an innovation would have fundamentally altered the structure of the energy market, which relies on the controlled distribution of electricity through centralized systems that can charge consumers for access. The potential for abundant, Decentralized electricity was seen as a threat to the established business models of energy companies, and Tesla's work was ultimately suppressed. Tesla's vision of abundant energy was not just a technological breakthrough. It was a challenge to the very foundations of the market economy. In a world where energy is free and abundant, there is no need for a profit-driven market to allocate resources. The idea that abundance could be bad for business highlights the contradictions inherent in a market system that relies on scarcity to function. Science and profit motives. The market's reliance on profit motives often means that scientific innovations that could benefit society are either delayed or suppressed if they do not align with the interests of powerful economic actors. Pharmaceutical companies, for instance, have little incentive to invest in research for diseases that primarily affect low-income populations as there is little profit to be made from such ventures. Similarly, breakthroughs in renewable energy technologies, which could provide abundant, sustainable energy, have often been met with resistance from the fossil fuel industry, which profits from maintaining the scarcity of energy resources. Abundance as a threat to the market. The market's need for scarcity is perhaps most evident in the way it responds to technological advancements that could create abundance. Whether it is Tesla's ideas for abundant energy, advances in renewable resources, or the development of technologies that could automate labor entirely, these innovations are often seen as threats to the established order.
a world of abundance undermines the very premise of capitalism, which is built on the idea that resources are limited and must be distributed through competition and profit-driven mechanisms. Abundance challenges this logic by suggesting that there is enough for everyone and that society can be organized around principles of cooperation rather than competition. 4. Moving beyond scarcity, rethinking the market and science for a post-scarcity world. If we are to create a world that is free from violence, inequality, and exploitation, we must move beyond the scarcity-driven mentality that underpins both the market system and the way we think about science and progress. UBI may be a step in the right direction, but it is ultimately a reformist solution that does not address the deeper systemic issues of capitalism. To truly end violence and create a just society, we need to rethink the market itself and embrace a new paradigm of abundance. Post-scarcity economics. A post-scarcity world is one in which the basic needs of all individuals are met and resources are distributed according to need rather than profit. Such a world is made possible by the very scientific advancements that the market system often seeks to suppress. Automation, renewable energy, and other technologies have the potential to create a world of abundance, where scarcity is no longer the defining feature of economic life. In this world, the role of money would be diminished, if not entirely eliminated, as access to resources would no longer be mediated by the market. Science in the service of humanity. In a post-scarcity society, scientific progress would no longer be constrained by the profit motives of the market. Instead, science would be directed toward solving the most pressing challenges facing humanity, ending poverty, eradicating disease, and creating sustainable energy systems. The focus would shift from profit-driven innovation to innovations that benefit all of humanity. By removing the constraints of the market, science can truly serve the interests of society rather than the interests of capital. A new paradigm of cooperation, moving beyond scarcity also requires rethinking the way society is organized. Competition, which is the driving force of capitalism, would be replaced by cooperation. Instead of fighting over limited resources, individuals and communities would work together to create systems of mutual aid and support. This shift in mentality is crucial for ending violence as it removes the fear and insecurity that comes from living in a world of scarcity. 5. Conclusion UBI and the need for a new economic model Universal basic income is a valuable policy proposal that addresses some of the most pressing issues created by technological unemployment and market-driven inequality. However, UBI is still a solution that operates within a system based on scarcity and competition. While it can provide temporary relief to those who are most vulnerable, it does not challenge the deeper systemic issues of capitalism. To truly create a world of abundance, we must move beyond the market and embrace a new economic model that prioritizes cooperation over competition and abundance over scarcity. This requires rethinking not only the way we distribute resources, but also the way we approach scientific progress. By freeing science from the constraints of the market, we can unlock its full potential to create a just, sustainable, and peaceful world. Only by ending the mentality of scarcity and embracing a new paradigm of abundance can we hope to end violence and create a society where everyone has access to the resources they need to thrive. UBI is a step in the right direction, but it is not the final solution. The market itself must be brought into question, and a new economic model must be built that is capable of realizing the full potential of science to create abundance for all.